A recent trend I've noticed within the YouTube photography world is actually one I can get behind and that is the rise in popularity of the 40mm prime lens. I've noticed this especially on the Fujifilm X mount where the 27mm 2.8 prime lens is sold out pretty much everywhere in the UK anyway. I'm also going to be checking out the Canon EF 40mm 2.8 Pancake Prime lens, a full frame lens released over 10 years ago and I'm testing it on both my Canon R6 Mark II as well as shooting a little bit of film on my Canon 300V film camera. Today I'll explore why everybody may be swapping to this focal length and I'll be putting it to the test for portraits, street photography and general day-to-day -day travel photography too. So I tested both these lenses starting with the Canon 40mm pancake lens in a very gloomy overcast city of York. And a 40mm prime is the perfect everyday focal length for capturing your travels or daily life. The 40mm is considered a normal lens capturing scenes faithfully and accurately, how your eyes may have seen it on the day, and with just a little bit extra reach over something like a 35mm prime lens. For portraits, 40mm is a happy medium between two of the most popular focal lengths in terms of prime lenses anyway, the 35mm and the 50mm yeah, cool. prime. Just like pose for me there. Cool, now walk towards me. The extra reach of 40mm starts to borrow characteristics from 50mm prime lenses, adding in more subject isolation thanks to that little extra compression. Maybe you go like dead center. But at the same time, it allows you to capture a little bit more of the environment compared to using a 50mm prime lens in the same situation. I was really impressed with the Canon EF 40mm pancake lens. You would not guess for a second that this lens is over 10 years old. The autofocus was just simply perfect on the Canon R6 Mark II. It has a maximum aperture of f2.8 and on a full frame camera you get decent background separation. A little extra over say a 35mm prime at the same aperture. Um, maybe actually more like there, because then you're going to get like reflections off there. 40mm is similar in versatility, maybe even a little more so to a 50mm lens in the sense that you can get full length, mid length and close up head and shoulder portraits with literally a step forwards or backwards. And you get a little more of a flattering look in terms of facial features over something like 35mm when you are up close getting this kind of portrait. It is a great focal length for travel too where you might want to take shots like this where you have a primary subject in the frame but you want to capture plenty of the environment too. This little lens weighs practically nothing too and is tiny on the front of your Canon RF camera. The entire lens is probably just slightly smaller than the EF to RF adapter itself, which of course you're gonna need to use if you wanna use it on your RF camera. What really shocked me with this lens was its optical performance though, because this lens is super sharp as you can see here. Here is a shot side by side with the RF 35mm 1.8 lens where first of all you can see the difference in focal length where the 40mm is bringing a little bit more focus to the subject and makes the background appear more prominent thanks to that longer working distance. Taking a close look shows that this EF 40mm lens is just as sharp as the RF 35mm 1.8 lens even when the 35mm prime is stepped down one whole stop from its maximum aperture of f1.8. I'm just gonna take a quick second to let you know that the sponsor of today's video is Squarespace, which long before they sponsored the channel has always been my go-to recommendation to photographers and creatives when it comes to building your own website. The thing I love the most about Squarespace is that you don't need any prior knowledge or experience in things like coding, 
website design or website building to create an amazing website. Thanks to its easy to use fluid engines, most things that you wanna edit are as simple as drag and drop. And that means that your new website will be up and running and showcasing your work to potential clients fast. And Squarespace not only offer amazing customizable galleries for showcasing your work, but if you do have products to sell, whether they are physical or digital, Squarespace also offers all the tools you need to create an online store and shop front to start selling quickly and easily. So if you are ready to dive in and start creating your perfect website, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash James Reader to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code James Reader. Okay, let's get into the rest of the video. Now let's take a look at Fujifilm's version of the 40 mm prime lens using the X-T5, and that is the 27 mm 2.8 RWR lens, where this lens is literally sold out everywhere in the UK right now. And here it is on front of the Fujifilm X-T5, and this lens is even smaller and even lighter than the Canon lens from earlier. It also has a 2.8 aperture, but as the X-T5 is an APS-C camera, it's more like a 40 mm f4 full frame equivalent. I think the surge in popularity with the Fuji film lens in particular can be blamed on the fact that people are looking for an alternative to the X100V since that camera is sold out everywhere too. People are pairing this lens up with say an XE4 or an XT5 like here for a compact, versatile and lightweight alternative to forking out way over retail right now for an X100V. And Side by side, you can see that the X-T5 with this 27 mm lens gets surprisingly close to the X-100V in terms of size and dimensions. But it does have a little bit of more weight to it, likely thanks to the addition of IBIS and other professional features that the X-T5 enjoys. And putting this lens to use, I am a fan with how these environmental portraits came out using this combination. You ready, Ben? Yeah, you do notice a little bit of loss in background separation over that full frame Canon lens, but despite this, it still produces very pleasing separation between your subject and background with soft transitions between the in focus and out of focus areas. Yeah, and shoot down. I also noticed that eye autofocus with this combination was great. I wouldn't say it's up to Canon level, but it is pretty fast and pretty reliable. So let's take a closer look at the optical performance of this combination. But first of all, I can't help but say just how much I love the colors coming out of this Fujifilm cameras, especially for portraits like this. The lens performs excellently. Just look how sharp the eye is rendered in this photo. This lens seems to have no issue keeping up with the X-T5. So with this combo, you get comparable size and weight to the X100V but with even better image quality. And of course you get that interchangeable lens mount too. And while we're at it, whilst I have both cameras, let's compare this high megapixel APS-C sensor to the lower megapixel full frame sensor of the Canon R6 Mark II and compare things like resolution and sharpness. And side by side, you can see that everything is pretty close. I do notice consistently though, that the Canon produces a slightly cleaner image over the Fujifilm where the Fuji is a little muddier, for lack of a better word, at comparable ISOs. Some of this is just some of that Fujifilm charm though, whereas some people might call the Canon digital and clinical looking, the Fujifilm has a little bit more character to it. And this is something that a lot of people do prefer in Fujifilm cameras. Back to the lens, 40 mm is the perfect focal length in a prime lens for things like street photography and documenting everyday life. And again, over 35 mm, that extra reach that you get with 40 mm means that you can isolate subjects if you want, 
You can also step this lens down to say f4 or f5.6 and capture entire scenes effortlessly. The slightly tighter focal length over 35mm means you can keep a little extra distance from your subject too so you can be a little bit more inconspicuous compared to say a 35mm prime lens when you're out and about shooting street photography. This X-T5 27mm combination is probably my favourite camera lens combination for this style of photography. It has those Fujifilm tactile dials on the body as well as that aperture ring on the lens that really makes you feel connected to the camera. Despite it being an APS-C camera and a relatively slow lens, I was surprised with how much 3D pop I was getting in some of these images. Subjects are rendered in really high detail against the out of focus background and I think there's just something going on in that out of focus transition zone that is really making the subject pop. I think it might be also a combination of that really high 40 megapixel sensor that just makes subjects look super sharp and detailed. But to put it plainly in terms of image quality, this is one of the best camera lens combinations I've ever used. And it keeps up with pretty much any full frame camera that I've ever used in terms of resolution. And it's really fun to boot, especially for things like street photography and travel. The thing that makes 40mm so special for street or travel photography is that it allows you to visualise a shot or composition and capture it exactly as you pictured it. A 40mm prime lens is generally affordable, tiny and lightweight so it's no big deal to just throw it in your bag and bring it along to shoot or when you're travelling because it pretty much works in any situation. And I really hope we see Canon release a native RF 40mm pancake lens. For me they can just reuse the original optics from this lens because it really is that good so hopefully we see that soon but if not there are plenty of these 10 year old 40mm EF pancake lenses on the market and it compares excellently to any of the lower cost prime lenses that Canon are putting out on the RF mount right now so it comes highly recommended from me. And the Fujifilm 27mm lens performs great optically and it has great autofocus and not to mention it even has weather sealing. This is a lens every Fujifilm shooter should have in their arsenal in my opinion and an excellent alternative to the X100V when paired up with one of their smaller camera bodies. But what's your opinion of 40mm? Is it the Goldilocks lens? Is it just right or do you prefer one of the more conventional focal lengths in a prime lens such as 35mm or 50mm? let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.